In this quick video, we will take a look at how to find the limit of piecewise functions. If you are unsure about piecewise functions, I recommend taking a look back at my previous video, um, which is a refresher of piecewise functions for calculus students. All right, so we have a piecewise function here that's graphed, f of x. We can see that it has three separate pieces, and the breaking points are at negative 1 and at 2. You could sort of argue, is negative 1 really a breaking point? You know, we can tell that the function is continuous here, um, meaning that there is no, like, gap uh, at negative 1. But over here at 2, we do have this jump discontinuity. Let's take a look at finding the limit at those points as x approaches negative 1. Recall that for the limit to exist overall at negative 1, the limit from the left and the limit from the right must equal the same number. And since they do, the limit from the left and the limit from the right is both what looks like 1 here. Um, that means that the overall limit as x approaches negative 1 is 1. Now, f of negative 1 is also 1. Um, and that's why this function is, in fact, continuous here at negative 1. Now, looking at when x is 2, we see that our piecewise function goes from, it looks like a quadratic to a constant function over here. And at 2, if we want to look at the overall limit, once again, we need to look at the left limit. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left is 4, whereas the limit as x approaches 2 from the right is only 3. And so because the left and right limit are not equal, that means the overall limit does not exist. The left and right limits both exist, um, but since they're not equal, the overall limit does not exist. G of theta is a piecewise function that is not graphed for us. It is instead just written out. So we'll take a look at this in a more algebraic way. We want to find the limit as theta approaches pi from the left of g of theta. If we take a look here, um, where would we want to plug it in, right? This piecewise function it has three different pieces, and their breaking point is at theta equals pi. Now, theta is just our x value. Um, pi is the specific number that we're focused on. So approaching pi from the left, that means less than pi. That means we need to look up here. So we're going to plug in pi in for our function up here, this top part. So we'll plug in and we'll have 3 sine of pi. And then the sine of pi is 0, so we have 3 times 0, and therefore this left-sided limit is 0. We want to take a look at the limit as theta approaches pi from the right now. Approaching a value from the right means that you are greater than that value. So we need to look at the part of our piecewise function where theta is greater than our value of pi, which is down here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to also use direct substitution, except now we're just plugging it into the bottom function. So we'll have negative 2 cosine of 2 pi. The cosine of 2 pi is 1. So we'll have negative 2 times 1, and therefore our right-sided limit is uh, negative 2. Now, because our left side and right side, those limits do not match up, we would say that the overall limit as theta approaches pi of our function g of theta does not exist since the two limits are, the two one-sided limits are not equal. In this next problem, go ahead and pause the screen and answer 1 through 5, then go ahead and check and see how you did. And here are the answers. I did want to talk about number 5 just briefly. Um, it's asking us about the limit as x approaches 1. If we know, like each one of this, this uh, piecewise function has the breaking point at 2. So when x is 1, we're looking up here, since 1 is less than 2. And that's just a line, 3 minus x, which is a linear function. So I kind of sketched the graph of this here, and we can see that our breaking point is at x equals 2. And so this is the line 3 minus x here. So my point being that, you know, 3 minus x and even this quadratic function here, they're both polynomial functions, and they're continuous everywhere. Um, and therefore, the limit as x approaches 1 is just the same as plugging in 1. It's just direct substitution will work for that. So all we need to do is plug in 1 here because 1 is not an issue like 2 was. 2, we had to check both uh, one-sided limits because they could potentially be different. 